Welcome to another InMotion Hosting video tutorial. My name is Arnel Custodio and I will be guiding you through how to use the eWWW Image Optimizer plugin for WordPress. The Optimizer is a plugin that takes images added to your site and optimizes them so that they can load quicker. The eWWW doesn't really stand for anything. By the developer's description, it's just the expression that people say when a large image is taking forever to load. The plugin does work automatically or you can select to optimize images. And there is a lot of control that you can exercise when using the plugin. However, they make it really easy and automate the optimizing in the basic mode. They also have a ludicrous mode, which is the advanced mode, if you want to have full control. We're going to show you how to use the basic mode and then give a quick overview of the advanced or ludicrous mode. To install the plugin, please log into your WordPress administrator dashboard. Then go to plugins. Under Plugins, click on Add New. In the search field, type eWWW Image Optimizer. The plugin will appear, then go ahead and click on the Install Now button. When the Activate button appears, click on it to complete the installation of the plugin. After you have completed the installation, click on Settings, then click on eWWW Image Optimizer. You'll get a small dialog box that says, In order to recommend the best settings for your site, please select which goal or goals are most important. Speed up your site, save storage space, and then you have two radio buttons underneath that. The first one says, Get five times more optimization and priority support, which is to opt in to buy their premium version, and the other one is to stick with the free version. For this particular video, we will be using the free version. So click on stick with free mode for now and select speed up your site. When you select speed up your site, the images are not necessarily compressed to the smallest size, but they are optimized so that your site does load faster. You can also click on save storage space and have the images compressed to a very small size. If you don't want to have any of these options done, and you don't want any optimization done to your site, you can always click on the last link, which is I know what I'm doing, leave me alone. And this will immediately take you to the settings and nothing will be immediately optimized. The next small dialog box that appears on the screen will be the recommended settings for your site. This all depends on what you've checked in the previous boxes. So in this case, they're saying to remove the metadata and use lazy load. Uh, metadata has to do with the text data that's added to your images for SEO purposes, and in some cases also for EXIF data, like for photographers. So you may or may not want to have that done. If you don't want to have that done, then you may want to just go ahead and uncheck that box. Lazy load allows for the image to be loaded when it appears on the screen. So if you load up a web page and you're required to scroll down the page so that you can see an image, that image won't load until it appears on the screen. The WebP conversion option is a new format for images that are specifically for websites. The next option is for the size of the images that you can use on your site, specifically the maximum size for the images. So in this case, the maximum size that we have by default here is 1920 wide and 1920 high, and these are in pixels. You can always go back and set these in the settings later. The next option is for embedded help. As it says there, you can see that it's for accessing the documentation and support from your WordPress dashboard. And finally, you have an anonymous reporting setting. And like many other applications, you can always uncheck this so that you're not sending anonymized usage data to the developers. Once you've finished selecting the recommended settings, click on the Save Settings button to complete the setup of the plugin. After you've completed saving your settings, you will get a confirmation screen that will tell you a couple things. You're going to see that new uploads will be optimized automatically. That means that if you have any images added to the media library for your WordPress, the plugin will automatically optimize it for you based on the settings that you've selected. There's also an option to list the media that's in your library. And then you can selectively optimize images, or you can also use WPCLI to optimize your images in bulk. Once you're done with the confirmation screen, click on the Done button. When you've completed the setup of the plugin, 
you'll be put into the settings screen and you'll get an initial optimization score. You can see a link that says view recommendations and then to the right of that you'll see a link for bulk optimizer, optimize unlimited Amazon S3 buckets with our S3 image optimizer, and then background optimization for faster uploads enabled and there's a retest link. What you should start with is the bulk optimizer in the top right hand corner and this will immediately assess all the images and begin the optimization of the images on your site. So go ahead and click on bulk optimizer and then you'll be taken to the bulk optimize screen and you should take note of the warning at the top. Bulk optimization will alter your images and cannot be undone. Please be sure that you have a backup of your images before proceeding. And that's all important if you're going to be making any changes to your site at all. You should always have a good backup of your WordPress site. There is an option here in the, in the far right corner. The force reoptimize option, you can check off where it says previously optimized images will be skipped by default. Check this box before scanning to override. You can also add a pause when it's optimizing between images by clicking in the box and just adding a number, which is in seconds. If you're ready to go ahead and, and begin optimizing, you can click on Scan for Unoptimized Images. Notice that they summarize the number of items found in the media library. They also indicate that the images found will be displayed before the optimization begins. They also let you know where they will be scanning for unoptimized images in your WordPress installation. Click on the Scan for Unoptimized Images button to begin. When it's finished assessing the images, it will give you a number of the images that are going to be optimized. And this again gives you time to go to the options on the right hand side. If you want to have previously optimized images skipped, then you can check on the box there. And you can also add a pause between images as is being optimized. Click on the blue Optimize Images button to start the optimization of the images that the plugin has found. While the optimization is in progress, you can click on Stop Optimizing, and then you can reload the page to start again. Once the optimization has completed, you'll be sent back to the settings. You'll see the optimization score, local compression savings, and you'll see links again for view recommendations, and you can also view the optimized images. And as you saw before, the links for the bulk optimizer, the S3 image optimizer, and then the, the retest options are still there on the right hand side. If you think you need to retest your site for optimization, you can click on the retest button and it will start over again. Let's take a quick look at all the settings in the basic tab. The first thing you'll see is a link that says enable ludicrous mode. When you click on that link, you'll see a lot more tabs appear that allows you to have more granular control over the optimization plugin. Let's go back to easy mode. The very first option that you can select here is says activate easy IO and or the compress API to get five times more optimization. This is again a way to try to get you to the premium mode. So if you click on this, you'll see the options for the API key that you would need to buy as well as the subscription that you can activate. We are using the free mode for the demonstration of the plugin. The remove data option that we saw when you first set up the plugin is here as well. And again, you can see that it removes all the metadata, comments, color profiles, and anything that is not pixel data. The maximum size of the images that are being used on your site can be set here. So you can set it to something smaller if you're still having issues with your images taking a while to load. But you do need to keep in mind how they appear. So if your images are supposed to be pretty large, then you should make sure that the size is appropriate to the images that you are displaying. Lazy load is also an option here that you saw in the setup of the plugin. And again, it loads the image once it appears instead of having to load it before the image is even being shown on the screen. There's an option here called LQIP. It's for low quality image placeholders. It's only available with the premium version of the plugin and is used with Lazy Load. If you click on the tooltip next to LQIP, you'll find a much more detailed explanation of the option. You can also set exclusions for images that you want to have load earlier or keep the metadata. 
And you can see the instructions here, which allows you to add those options per line. The next option that you saw in setup as well is called WebP conversion. And this allows you to use that format instead of using other formats. Notice that they made note of the GIF to WebP conversion because it does require an active API key. And here you have the WebP delivery method. You'll be given code that you can add to your site through the HD access file. All the information for this is in the documentation as well as for NGINX users who may not have the same type of rewrite rules. If you want to have the rewrite rules automatically inserted, you just click on the insert rewrite rules option here. The last two options have to do with JavaScript and WebP rewriting in picture WebP rewriting or image WebP rewriting. One uses JavaScript for CDNs and cache friendly WebP delivery, and the other one is JavaScript free. Notice that the first option with the JavaScript does support CSS background images using the lazy load option, but the next option does not. Once you're satisfied with all the changes that you've made to the basic settings, make sure you click on the Save Changes button at the bottom of the screen. At the very, very bottom of the screen here, if you scroll down a little further, you'll see the recommendations from the developers, including hosting and plugin services. The other tabs that you see up here beside the basic one is Support and Contribute. When you click on the Support tab, you'll see that there is a panic button which will allow you to disable the options. And then you can also enable or disable the embedded help option, and you have a debugging option. You also have debugging information, which is very useful for developers who are troubleshooting issues with a possible conflict with a plugin or theme. The other important links at the top of the support tab are the documentation link, the plugin support link, the submit feedback, and server status. The documentation link is also very, very helpful. They have very detailed documentation that can help you to understand or use options, especially for their ludicrous mode if you're not familiar with it. Plugin support, if you click on that, you'll see that a chat box will come up where you can, you can ask questions and try to get answers in chat. And they also have an option where it says ask, where you can send email to them for additional help. The submit feedback link is pretty straightforward. It's for submitting feedback to the makers of the plugin. And then the server status link is to see the status of the CDN servers if you're using the premium version of the plugin. If you click on the Contribute tab, the first option you'll see here is to allow usage tracking. And this was the option that you had when you first set up the plugin. You can allow it here if you want to or uncheck it if you don't want them to track. Make sure to click on the Save Changes button again to save any of the changes that you make. To do a quick overview of the ludicrous mode, Go back to the basic tab and click on the link that says enable ludicrous mode. We can see that there are more tabs that have been provided, which includes local, advanced, resize, convert, and overrides. If you click on local, you can see the optimization that's set for the different types of file formats. And then you can also see options here for the backup originals. And then if you make any changes here, then you need to make sure that you click on the Save Changes button. Under Advanced, you can see the different types of optimizations that you can set, which include parallel optimization, scheduled optimization, media folders, include originals, and folders to optimize or folders to ignore. In the Resize tab, you can set more resize options based on the actual file itself. You can resize existing images and you can resize other images outside of the media library. You can also disable resizing, which can come in handy for certain files that you don't want to touch in terms of the size. The Convert tab allows you to control the conversion options, and this is only available for images in the media library, but it doesn't apply to any WebP formatted images. You can see that you can hide conversion links, you can delete originals, you can control the JPEG to PNG conversion. And you can also do the reverse of that. You can control the PNG to JPEG conversion. Note that JPEG is considered a lossy format and that when you convert over from PNG to JPEG, that you're going to lose some quality of the image. 
The option for a GIF to PNG conversion is also in here. Again, we mentioned earlier that in order to have this, you will need to have the premium version of the plugin in order to use it. And finally, you have the overrides tab. And it's not so much a tab as it is a pop-up window that gives you information about how to use overrides. It also tells you how to set it up. And that's the EWWW or U Image Optimizer plugin for WordPress. It's one of the best optimization plugins that you can get for your WordPress site. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give us a thumbs up below and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate you watching. Thanks again and have a great day. Check out our InMotion Hosting Support Center for help with your website. We provide thousands of step-by-step -step guides, videos, and much more to lead you towards making your online project a successful one. You can find us at www.inmotionhosting.com support.